Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer and this is Playing the Glass Bead Game. And today we begin something new. This is Glass Bead Fractal number 1.1. I have a new playmate. Let me explain to everybody in case you're not aware what's going on is we decided to wrap the regular episodes of Glass Bead Game at the end of last year for now. And Michael and I will continue to do uh, Project Kids on a monthly basis and we may continue to do Trilateral Commission. Um, but I will be uh, playing the glass bead game in new uh, new formats, as well as bringing in information, as you've seen the last few episodes of Sinote with Elisa, um, a lot of background information from the Mind Control MKUltra project and sort of underground science type of realm to fill out what we do here but today will be glass bead fractal i will be having new playmates they will come in for a few rounds at a time and we have an excellent leadoff batter here so uh, he's got bill big fills to, uh, big shoes to fill but i think he has the right name to do it so we're moving from juan to juan juan ayala welcome to the glass bead game i'm looking forward to playing with you my friend likewise i'm excited to be here thank you for thinking of me when Juan, the other Juan, needed a replacement, so I'm here for it, and I'm ready to get weird, so. Absolutely. Well, I, I, no one can replace Juan, and you can't be replaced either, but, um, you know, to come in, I think he's glad to see what this looks like with me doing this with other people, and and I have a, a, stink, a sneaking suspicion that, like, when it gets exciting with some others, he'll be like, can I come in for this episode? Can I join in? And, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be uh, awesome. And you were the natural pick for me because you're very, very interested in some of the topics and ideas that have piqued my interest the most over the years that I've been working with Michael and that I wanted to do an exploration of like on a level that he just that he's interested in something different right and so I'm excited to do this with you Juan will be with me uh for the next three episodes and uh, we'll see what we carve out and may come back to play uh, again after that so um I know that you have watched a couple of episodes and you asked me a few questions but I just wanted to give you the opportunity before we get started to sort of ask any questions of me about what the glass bead game is, uh, what you just your thoughts on that in general. And uh, so we're starting from a space that you and I and everyone understands. So I am in the middle of the book, not in the middle, somewhere on chapter three or four, because I'm taking it a step at a time because it is a heavy book. And I made the mistake of when somebody asked for reading recommendations, I recommended them the glass bead game. So it's like, here, take this, this thing that I haven't, because I hadn't even started to read it. This is before I started to read it. And they're like, oh, do you recommend it? I was like, well, I'm going to start reading this. So here it is. But once you start diving into it, it's so complex and it's just crazy to, to where I haven't even fully grasped it. It's almost but it kind of touches onto what what I'm where I think where I want it to go is cuz I'm doing like this I'm trying to do research on the origins of chess and how maybe chess is used as some sort of simulacra of our reality whatever that is in order to and if you manipulate that you're able to cause an effect in the real realm whatever whatever real is so that's what I'm hoping the glass bead game is, because to be 100%, I still don't know what the glass bead game is quite yet. And I did listen to both episodes you sent me. So I'm kind of getting it's I know it's got to do with synchronicities here and there. But the actual game itself, I haven't gotten to that part yet, because, again, I am taking it a step at a time. And the it just so happens to be that the copy that I got <laughs> of the glass bead game, the physical copy was printed here in my city. Orlando, Florida, which I found to be weird right off the bat. As soon as I got, I was like, wow, look, it's already, it's already starting. It's already starting. The, the game has already started before we've even started to play it. So 
we may we may find out that you're Joseph Connect, and uh, <laughs> right, like this is an ongoing debate about who Joseph Connect is. But actually, no, this is perfect. You're starting from the exact same place that we started from. So, what ha- just to k- kind of fill you in a little bit, how we became hip to the glass bead game is um, more than two years ago now. Yeah. We received, uh, Michael received uh, a letter and a gift from a gentleman who he was familiar with sort of in one way, like the gentleman has multiple identities and Michael was familiar with him sort of under one of them, but uh, he likes to sort of try on different identities for size. Let's put it that, that way. And he sort of creates interactions with people based on that and he sent Michael a gift right and the gift was um like if I recall it was like some kind of special coin and some really some some sort of uh souvenir of some type of Masonic lore and there was a poem that was like an ode sort of to, to Michael Wan um, that in, it, I don't remember it now exactly in the details because it was a couple of years ago, although I could probably find the episode where we go through it. This is before we start the glass bead game. And um, in the book, in the letter, it's like a poem letter kind of thing. Um, it refers to the glass bead game, which neither one of us had ever heard of. So we look up what the glass bead game is and there's, but a few things, but the most prominent thing that rises to the top is this book by Herman Hess. And from the description of the book, it sounded like it very well matched some of the um, sort of paths and uh, disciplines that Michael and I had been t- undertaking in our Project Kids series, right? And so we both immediately bought the book and like read the first like maybe 50 pages. And it was like, all right, this is it. We're, now we're playing the glass bead game. And so we had decided, you know, we at that point was we're doing Project Kids. We had started out sort of once a month and moved to every other week. We decided we're going to play the glass bead game weekly and do Project Kids once a month, right? And the, the glass bead game is going to be sort of an underground endeavor for the inner circle and Project Kids will be our public thing. And so we start the series and I only finished the book like what, six months ago? Something like that. It took us all that time because like, I think Michael read it quicker than I did. But what ended up happening is like, we ended up moving and all these other things happened and we were we were away from it for a while and then we went back to it. And it's a, it's a pretty dense, heavy book. It's, you can't read, it's not like the book where you can whip off 50 pages in an evening and feel like you have a good understanding. It's like, if you're really trying to understand that it's like maybe five pages at a time maximum. Um, And so we were literally like making up our own rules and ways of playing the game before we actually even understood it. And, and um, by the time we were done with it, um, I realized that like we, we had come very close on a lot of levels to, to replicating a, a, a version of, of, of it. Um, but also that the point of the glass bead game is that everybody has a different style and a different way of sort of playing and then recording and mo- memorializing what that game was. And you'll sort of see as this sort of progresses um, an argument over exactly what the game is and what the game should be as part of the game. 